In the intro of this video, you saw me flying my QAV 250 quadcopter. I'm using the CC3D flight controller, and in this video, I'll show you how to set that up. For the parts, you'll need your motors and your ESCs. It doesn't matter what state they're in right now, I just have mine half assembled because I'm still reworking some of the wiring. You'll also, of course, need your flight controller. I'm using the mini CC3D flight controller. There's also a larger version, and that works as well. In order to power your motors and your ESCs, you'll of course need a battery. This is a three cell battery. And to actually communicate with your flight controller, you'll need a transmitter and receiver pair. I've got the Spectrum DX5E transmitter, and I also have the Spectrum AR610X receiver. And to also configure your flight controller and to communicate with it, you'll be needing a micro USB cable that connects to your computer. In order to configure the CC3D flight controller, you'll have to download this software called Libre Pilots. I'll put a link in the description of this video. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to this vehicle setup wizard. And this is gonna walk us through all the steps required to configure the flight controller. One thing that's super important in this entire process is to make sure you don't have any propellers connected to your motors. You don't want them to accidentally start up when you're calibrating any of the settings because they can damage your motors, or damage your propellers, damage wire, and they can also um, hurt you. So make sure not to have your propellers connected. So just to continue, uh, first thing you want to do is plug in your CC3D flight controller. So I've got one end of the USB connect to my computer, and then this end I'm just going to um, just put into the CC3D flight controller with this port. I um, then you can see that I've got the green light indicating that it is receiving power from my computer and then this blue light to mean that um, I can send and receive information to it. So the next thing I want to do is just uh, perform a firmware update. All right, now that that is complete, we can go to the next step. And this step, we're basically going to identify our device. We have the CC3D flight controller and this is just image of it that should show up on your screen or something similar. Uh, another thing we want to note is that we have this USB copter control um, as the device. And another verification, we have open pilot copter control 3D. So the copter control is the CC and CC 3D. So just make sure you have these device settings and then we'll go to next step. The next thing we need to determine is the encoding of our receiver. So when you're sending a signal from your receiver to your flight controller, you need to determine based on this encoding what the information is and how to extract it. So some of the common types are PWM, PPM, and SBUS. My receiver has PWM. And what this means is that every single channel of my receiver uses a single wire. So looking at my receiver, I've got each of these different colors indicating a different wire or a different, a different signal um, because it's a using a PWM encoding. If you're using a PPM encoding or SBUS encoding, then you'll only have a red and black wire indicating power and ground and only one wire for the signal because all of the signals can be transmitted on a single wire. So in order to determine which one you're using, you'll, you'll just have to look it up for your receiver. Each one's different. In my case, it's a PWM encoding, but for yours, it may be slightly different. So based on your receiver, you can uh, indicate it here on this page. So I'm gonna select PWM and go to the next step. Now we need to determine the physical configuration of our quadcopter. Um, for me, it's a quadcopter, but for you, it may be a multi-rotor, some fixed wing, um, or some other vehicle. This is important because it, it basically allows the software and the flight controller to know the orientation of your motors, the number of motors, and therefore which of the channels and PWM outputs it needs to use. So I'll be using a multi-rotor, so uh, just quadcopter configuration. So I'm going to select multi-rotor. And this is also a very important step because there's a difference between an X configuration and a plus configuration. So as you can see on my quadcopter, if we look at it in this format, it's got these two lower wings that seem to like cross each other diagonally. This means that it's in this X format. You also have quadcopters that are in a plus format or a T shape. And that will depend on obviously the physical restrictions of the frame. So in this dialog, you can select what type of multi-rotor you're using. So you can see that we have quadcopter and X configuration 
or a quadcopter and plus configuration, and this changes the orientation of the motors. Another thing that will be very important in future steps is the numbering of these motors. So as you can see, the top left motor is number one, and then going clockwise, they increment to two, three, and four. This is important for the channels and then later on the PWM signals we need to send out. So in this step, this is also a step, it depends on your ESCs. My ESCs are this rapid ESC, meaning it has a higher, um, the PWM signal is a higher frequency. So if you're unsure, then you can go ahead and select the standard ESC. However, more modern ESCs are using this higher update rate. So um, if you've kind of recently bought your ESC, you're probably good to select this rapid um, ESC option or also just check the manual of your ESC and it should probably state it there. So in this step, we have a, just a quick little summary of everything we've done so far. So we just have um, controller type is the open pilot CC3D, multi-rotor to quadcopter X. In my case, I'm using PWM and also this rapid ESC update rate. There's also this connection diagram here um, when you're going through your steps to just offer a little bit of clarification on some of the channel numbers. So the next thing we want to do is calibrate our sensors. The internal sensors that the CC3D has are a gyroscope and accelerometer, and these are used to determine the orientation of the quadcopter. So it's super important that these are as accurate as possible, um, just so that your quadcopter um, is kind of stable in flight and is does what you expect it to do. We need to make sure we mount our CC3D correctly onto the frame. One thing I'm going to do real quick is attach all of the wires that are actually required. So from your receiver, um, your receiver uh, wires you should have all of these cables with these connections. And then this I think it's like an eight wire end. This is going to connect to the port that is um, right above the one of the USB. So just go ahead and connect that. And with that connected, then uh, there should be another uh, wire that comes with the CC3D. And this is what's used to actually output to the ESCs. And then this one, if you're looking at this configuration of CC3D, it just connects up top. And don't worry about connecting ESCs right now. That's a step we can do a little bit later. So what I'm going to do is place my CC3D right here on my frame. Try and put it in as close to the middle of the frame as possible and make sure it's um, nice and secure. So now that I have this attached, I'm going to do this calculate process. So make sure not to touch your quadcopter and make sure that it's relatively on the level surface um, so that everything is, is as accurate as possible. So with that step complete, now we're going to go to the ESC calibration step. But before we do that, we need to actually connect our flight controller wires to each of our individual ESCs. So I've already done this and I'm just going to highlight it real quick. So the importance of this is to make sure that our physical motors are connected to the correct PWM signals that our flight controller thinks they're connected to. So this is motor one from our diagram in the top left corner. And you need to take that ESC wire and connect it to the white wire that's coming from the flight controller. So um, just to show you, this orange wire that I'm holding right now is the signal wire from my top left motor. And this connects to the white wire of the ESC or of the flight controller. Then for this top right motor, this is going to connect to this green wire. The bottom right motor is going to connect to this light gray wire. And then this bottom left motor is going to connect to the yellow wire. So make sure that um, that correct sequence is um, put in place for the ESCs to the flight controller because then the uh, configuration, the physical configuration matches that of um, where the flight controller thinks it, um, all of the motors are expected to be. In this next step, we're going to start the actual ESC calibration process. So make sure you have your battery close by. And what we need to do is just read through these prompts um, on your own. Basically, it's saying uh, don't attach your propellers. Um, but the sequence of events we're going to do is press this start button, then connect our battery to your quadcopter and then you're going to hear a sequence of beeps then you want to press the stop button and then you'll hear some more beeps so i'm going to go ahead and do that right now 
So pressing start, connecting battery. So you'll hear a little pause after that first sequence of beeps. That's when you want to press the stop button and then immediately after you'll hear a few more beeps. So that was step one of the ESC calibration. Now we're going to move into the individual ESCs and the motors. So motors are going to actually start spinning, so make sure they're not connected. So what we're going to determine here is the essentially the duty cycle that turns on each of these motors. So you're still going to need your battery connected, and we're going to look at each of the motors individually. So looking at this top left motor, we're going to um, update this output value or this output PWM value until the motor starts spinning. So make sure you're not um, holding the motor or uh, anything close by. And if your motor isn't attached to the frame, then make sure it's fastened to something so that it's not gonna start spinning um, out of control. So in order to start this process, you can press the start button and slowly drag this, um, this scroll bar until the motor starts moving. I did this beforehand and I know roughly what value they start. So I'm just gonna quickly move over there. So once you get to the last few steps, um, it's helpful just use the arrow key so that you don't completely shoot off um, the right end and your motor starts spinning super, super quickly. So you saw right there is that when I went to um, the 16, that's when my motor starts spinning. And when that happens, you press the stop button. So once I've done that for the first motor, go ahead and click next. And then you're just gonna do this process for however many motors you still have. In this step, you can select a quadcopter frame or a pre-existing frame that has some default parameters and gain values for your flight controller and for really the weight of your frame and the actual orientation or, and configuration of your motors. I'm not gonna go into actually setting up these gains later just because the default values have worked um, really well for me. So if you see your frame on this left-hand side, then go ahead and select it. Mine is the QAV250, so I'm gonna go ahead and pick that. If yours doesn't show up, then there's this option for a generic quadcopter and X configuration, and that's a totally valid frame as well. Uh, it may not be as finely tuned, but it's still gonna get you fine. So I'm gonna select this QAV250, and that was it for the configuration of the flight controller. So now what you can do is press the save button, and what it's gonna do is basically send all of this to the flight controller, and um, load it up. We've now completed the setup of the CC3D flight controller. However, there's one more critical step, and that's setting up the transmitter in order to properly communicate with the flight controller. I'll be going over that in a second video and posting to the link to that video in the description of this video. So make sure to subscribe to my channel to get notified when that video is released. Otherwise, if you have any questions about this video, make sure to drop those in the comments below. And as always, thanks so much for watching and stay tuned for part two.